Hey guys, so last night at work, the girls and I were talking about like facilities that we had worked at before and somehow we got onto the topic of people who facility hop. And so I wanted to make a video kind of talking about things that I've noticed as far as like CNAs and nurses, um, not so much in the hospital setting, but especially in the long-term care setting who definitely facility hop. Like, it seems like every facility that I've worked at, everybody that works there has worked at like multiple facilities within the last year or two years. Um, you know, there's been a couple that the last two facilities that I've worked at, I've talked to people who say that they've either worked at the facility before and came back after working at multiple other facilities or they've just gone from facility to facility. And so it makes you kind of think about what is it about the long-term care setting or CNA work in general or the nursing field that makes people facility hop. I mean, wouldn't you rather have the longevity, the seniority in your job than to go from facility to facility, from, you know, getting used to the policies and procedures of one company to going to another facility and having to get used to all those things all over again, um, getting to know all new residents, all new patients. Um, I feel like people in the hospital setting stay in their jobs a lot longer, probably because, you know, morale is a lot higher. People have better benefits at hospitals usually. Um, they get treated better at hospitals, not always, but usually. Um, and just the overall atmosphere of working as a CNA or a nurse in the hospital is a lot better than working as a CNA or a nurse in the long-term care setting. And I'm just wondering if any of you guys who are CNAs or nurses have any input on this because um, I guess you could say that I have facility hopped. Um, I will tell you all the different types of facilities I've worked in. Um, my very first facility, I've been a CNA for two years, okay, and I will tell you every facility that I've worked at, not the names of them, but I will tell you. Um, I started out at a memory care unit. I worked there for almost a year, um, and they kind of worked me to death, so, um, eventually I got sick because I was working 80 hours a week, and that will do it to you. Um, so then after I got sick, I took a little bit of time off of work, and then I got a job at the hospital on the orthopedics unit. I got sick there also. Um, after that, I worked at another nursing home on a hospice, mainly hospice unit, um, some of them were short-term, like rehab type, but a lot of them were hospice and or behavioral issues. And um, after that job, I worked at um, an agency, actually, um, a staffing agency, and that didn't last very long. I did like two assignments for them, um, just because I didn't like how they kind of set you up for failure. I will tell you, um, I'll make a video like sharing my experience because I feel like it could be helpful if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, as far as dealing with agency and things that you should look out for, things that they should be providing for you and things that you should definitely know before you accept an agency position. Um, what else? After the agency job, I got the last CNA job that I had, which was on the trach vent unit. Um, well, mainly over there until like right before I left that job, they had hired someone else and they were basically floating me around wherever when I specifically got hired for the trach vent unit. Um, because I had trach um, experience when I was in nursing school previously and they hired this other lady who had no experience with trachs and they put her on the trach vent unit 
I don't know why. But um, then after that, you know, I just couldn't take the bullying that I was getting at that job and the way that um, things were run at that facility. And so then I got the caregiving job, which isn't technically a CNA job and it was home health. Um, I still have that job, by the way. Um, I just don't have like steady clients. I basically pick up hours there when I'm able to. Um, and now I have a full-time job on a short-term rehab unit, although I will be floated around because I'm new and technically I can't float within my first 60 days. Um, so I can't float until after Christmas, but, um, anyways, I'm sure they will be floating me around to wherever they need me as soon as they're able to. And they will probably try to well before Christmas, but you know, I just am curious to know if you are a CNA or a nurse, have you facility hopped? Have you known somebody who's a facility hopper? Like at when I was working on the memory care unit, one of the nurses, she literally told me that she had been to almost every nursing home in this area and she had to drive like to get to the nursing home the first nursing home that i was working at she literally had to drive like 45 minutes to an hour just to get there and it's because she had literally worked at almost every other nursing home in this area and i've worked at quite a few of them but there are plenty of them that i have not worked at and um Let's see, I've worked at one, two, three, four of them. So um, I guess you could call that facility hopping, but what do you think? Do you think that it's because of the way that we're treated that we facility hop? Do you think it's just people get bored and they want something new? I mean, what is it? I'm trying to figure out like what is it about CNA work or the nursing field, or the way that we're treated, or the long-term care setting that specifically, I guess, attracts people to facility hop, or pushes people to facility hop. Let me know what your thoughts are, because I'm curious to see what you guys think. Anyways, those are my thoughts on that topic. If there's any other topics you would like me to talk about, then be sure to let me know and I will get something filmed for you. And with that being said, that's all I have for right now. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you guys again soon.